In the 19th century, physicists thought that since sound waves travel through air, light waves must travel through some sort of medium as well. They called this theoretical medium ether. The famous luminiferous ether, this magical medium that was hypothesized to be what light required to move through the vacuum of space, just the way sound requires air to move from one place to another. How else could waves of light move through the vacuum of space unless there was some medium there, some hypothetical medium? Let's call it the ether. Ether, they theorized, is an invisible nothingness that permeates the universe. Its only physical property is that it allows light to propagate through it. But once precise measurements of the speed of light became possible, testing the predicted effects of ether on the speed of light became possible as well. The Earth orbits the Sun at about 66,500 miles per hour. If light travels through ether, they reasoned, then as the Earth moves through the ether, the speed of light should be different going with the ether than perpendicular to it. In an attempt to show the effects of ether on the speed of light, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted an experiment in 1887 at what is now Case Western Reserve University. Michelson was an expert in optical experiments, and he thought that he could devise an experiment where one would be able to see the slight difference in the speed of light measured on the Earth if you measured it along the direction of the motion of the Earth and at right angles to it. There should be a slight difference. Compared to the speed of light, Earth is not moving that fast. So if you're going to check the difference in the speed of light measured with the movement of the Earth compared with transverse to it, you need a level of precision that, was, that, that no one had before. The Michelson interferometer was just such an apparatus. Michelson and Morley devised an apparatus that would detect minute differences in speed between two beams of light. Light from one source is split into two directions through a half-silvered mirror. These beams are bounced between other mirrors and then recombined back into a single beam. When two light beams combine, if their waves are completely synchronized, the peaks combine to make an even more intense peak. If they are one half wavelength off, their peaks combine and cancel out the intensity. Slight differences in speed between two light waves will therefore produce a pattern based on the amount of interference between the two beams. This is known as an interference pattern. Examining the interference pattern from the two light beams sent out in different directions would clearly show if the speed of each light beam were different in different directions. But Michelson and Morley never detected such a difference. Their results were inconsistent with the existence of ether. The scientific world didn't know what to make of it. The, the famous scientists in Europe, all uh, Lord Rayleigh and Lord Kelvin and Lord Thompson, were saying, hey, come on, you must have done something wrong here. Uh, there has to be an ether. And the whole thing didn't get resolved until many, many years later when Einstein came along. Einstein's theory of special relativity proposed that the speed of light is always the same, regardless of the speed of the light source. The results of the Michelson-Morley experiment were entirely consistent with Einstein's view of the universe, and this served as the turning point in modern physics. The Michelson-Morley experiment was an experimental advance in technology that transformed science. Not only physics, but science. 